Thank you. Please be seated. Members of the class of 2015, President McCullough, Academic Vice President Killen, honored guests, friends and families of the graduates, faculty and administrators, welcome to this commencement ceremony. I am Jane Korn, and it's my privilege to be the Dean of Gonzaga Law School. I ask that you please stand and join with the Big Bing Theory, an undergraduate a cappella group, as they sing the national anthem. At the conclusion of the anthem, please remain standing for our invocation. stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight for the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red red the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag Say, does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the Thank you. It is my pleasure to introduce the Vice President of Mission for the University, Father Frank Case, who will give the invocation. Thank you, Dean Corn. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Gracious and loving God, as we celebrate today the graduation of these students from law school, we cannot help but be grateful to you for the multitude of graces and helps that have made today possible. First, the faculty and staff of the, law, of the School of Law thank you for these graduates whom they have come to know and love over the past few years. The graduates themselves are grateful for so many who have accompanied and supported them over these years of rather arduous preparation for today and for the years lying ahead. Grateful for family and friends who have sacrificed in order to support and sustain them in their studies. Grateful for the faculty and staff who have served and helped to form them as attorneys dedicated to a world marked by a greater sense of justice and commitment to the common good. Grateful to Gonzaga University for its mission. Particularly grateful to their classmates who celebrate this day with them. And grateful to the women and men, often on the margins of society, with and for whom they have worked through the law clinics women and men who have also taught them so much about life. May your life, O oh God, be with these graduates and with all for whom they are so grateful to you today. 
We pray in your blessed and holy name. Amen. Thank you, Father Case. Please be seated. Before we begin the formal part of this wonderful day, I would like to ask something of our graduating class. You are here today because of your hard work, but also because of the hard work and commitment of your mothers, fathers, spouses, partners, friends, children, and many other people who supported you in many ways and helped you get to this day. So I'm going to ask our graduating class to please stand Turn to the sides where your supporters are sitting and give them a round of, of applause to thank them for all they've done for you. Thank you. Throughout your three years here, you have struggled, learned, grown, and stretched. And the people who have helped you and educated you and sometimes confounded you are sitting in front of you. I'm going to ask the faculty of the law school to please rise to be acknowledged for all of their hard work. And I ask all of you to thank them for what they have done for you. Thank you. It is now my pleasure and privilege to introduce Dr. Thane McCullough, President of Gonzaga University. Dr. McCullough is the 26th President. He received his bachelor's from Gonzaga and his PhD from Oxford University. He knows Gonzaga inside and out, having worked for many years here in a variety of positions before becoming President. Please join me in welcoming President McCullough. Academic Vice President Killen, Dean Korn, our distinguished honorees today, Justice Mary Fairhurst, Professor Emeritus Mark Wilson, and Juris Dr. Jeffrey Harchi, members of the faculty, staff and administrators, honored family members, and special guests, but especially you, the graduates of Gonzaga School of Law class of 2015, what a privilege it is to be with you this morning. Today is a day of giving thanks and celebration for all of us. Today, graduates of the class of 2015, we recognize the remarkable achievements that have led to the granting of your law degree. Some of you entered law school immediately following your undergraduate work, but some of you did so having first spent time entering the professional world and gaining hands-on practical experience. Many of you here today are accompanied by spouses, daughters or sons, and extended family all of whom have also come to celebrate your accomplishments. They know better than most what sacrifices you have made to get to this point in your life and in your career. You're aware that I am myself a proud alumnus of Gonzaga University, someone who takes immense pride in the educational experiences afforded to me as an undergraduate the depth and breadth of my undergraduate experience prepared me well for the rigors of graduate school. But I must admit to you today that I look back on my graduate school experience as one of the most trying periods of my life. Acknowledging the practical reality that I was pursuing my graduate studies in a foreign country 
I clearly remember the frustrations which came with having to constantly juggle time for my studies and my research with the demands of family, an often unfulfilled desire to maintain friendships, and working to make ends meet. It is thus with sincere appreciation for the sacrifices that you and those who love and have supported you have made that I join with my colleagues in congratulating you. As you go forth from this day, I hope you carry these thoughts with you. In your dreams and aspirations, you carry the hopes and the dreams of this school of law and this university. We will miss you, but we look forward to celebrating your many achievements to come with you. Without question, you each will find opportunities for success and achievement in your future work. Make time to nourish your heart and your faith and your relationships along the way. Wherever you go in this life and whatever good works you choose to pursue, know that we will always consider you as one of us. You have been a gift to us, you inspire us, and we are grateful to have been with you on this part of your journey. It has been my honor to serve as president, for it allows me this day on behalf of the entire Gonzaga University community to wish you all the best in the next stage of your professional life. Godspeed and congratulations to you, the class of 2015. Thank you, Dr. McCullough. It is now my pleasure to introduce Dr. Patricia O'Connell Killen, the Academic Vice President of Gonzaga University. All academic deans and other key academic administrators report to her. Dr. Killen received her bachelor's from Gonzaga University and both her master's and PhD from Stanford. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Killen. Thank you, Dean Korn. I'm very glad to be able to join Dean Korn, President McCullough, and to bring to you on behalf of the College of Arts and Sciences and all the other schools of the university, congratulations on this day that we mark your important achievement. For over 100 years, the Jesuit and lay faculty, the staff and administrators of Gonzaga University School of Law have educated and mentored students in the practice of law, a profession that is at one and the same time an art, a skill, and a service to the wider community. Many of you brought a passion to serve to your study of the law. Others of you have developed it while you were here. But internalizing the practice of law as service is a distinctive mark of a Gonzaga Law graduate. And it is particularly fitting that today you will hear from a speaker who understands the profound meaning of the practice of law as an active project in advancing the common good and being present as we honor two men who also have embodied that in their lives. It is my wish for you that through the practice of law, you will contribute to the thriving of communities and the welfare of creation. May each of you embrace all the challenges before you with open minds, open hearts, and a courageous spirit. Congratulations. Thank you, Dr. Killen. Will President McCullough please come forward? Each year, we confer the Dean's Academic Achievement Award on a student who has had an exceptional impact on the life of our institution. This year's recipient of the Academic Achievement Award is Kyle Nelson.
Kyle graduated from Washington State University after growing up in nearby Davenport. During law school, he was a member of the Gonzaga Law Review and our national trial team. His experience includes an externship with the Honorable Edward F. Shea in Richland and with Lee and Hayes in Spokane, where he will be joining their litigation practice group after graduation. Kyle enjoys following GU and Wazoo Athletics and spending time with his family and wife, Julia. Kyle, congratulations. The Pro Bono Distinction Program recognizes the volunteer service provided by our students. Members of this year's graduating class who perform community service or volunteer legal service during their three years at Gonzaga uh, are noted in your program. Those students reported over 14,838 pro bono distinction hours during their three years in law school. And we know that many more hours were served but not reported. Our final student award this morning is the Dean's Platinum Pro Bono Award of Distinction to Timothy Schermetzler. <laughs> Tim earned a degree in economics from the University of Wisconsin Milwaukee and then worked six years in nonprofits supporting youth and law enforcement before joining Gonzaga. His passion for service is evident in his 1,141 hours and 15 minutes of logged pro bono time. He volunteered for the Center for Justice, Spokane County Superior Court, the County Prosecutor, and the Smart Justice Coalition, as well as the Gonzaga Student Bar Association and the Gonzaga Public Interest Law Project. And those are just a few examples. Tim aspires to a career in government and public service, enjoys any and all activities with his two yellow labs. Congratulations, Tim. Will professors Mark Wilson and Jeff Harchie stand and be recognized? The Gonzaga Law Medal is bestowed by the School of Law upon deserving individuals who have distinguished themselves in the service of justice. This year, the Law Medal is being awarded jointly. Mark Wilson came to Gonzaga in 1974 with considerable experience and a true vision of how the public good might be served in a law school environment. Within a year, he and his colleague, Jeffrey Harchi, translated that vision into a reality in founding the University Legal Assistance, also known as the Gonzaga Law Clinic, one of the first in the country. Mark's caring and personal fortitude raised the clinic to national prominence and the receipt of numerous state and national awards and honors. Overcoming skepticism and event hostility from some quarters of the legal profession. Today, the Gonzaga University School of Law is pleased to recognize leadership, vision, and generous commitment to service as it bestows upon Mark Wilson the Gonzaga Law Medal.
Imagine for a moment Jeffrey Harchi at 14 years of age, illegally jailed for two days in a cell directly across the street from his home. His parents, frenzied and agitated, seeking his whereabouts. At this moment, Jeffrey vowed to become a lawyer and to work for the disadvantaged and the powerless. Along with Mark Wilson in 1974, he built a program at the law clinic that became the model for the country for practical legal education, serving young and elderly indigent, disadvantaged, and disabled clients. The clinical law program became the primary legal services provider for the elderly in Spokane County. He also initiated a program at Gonzaga to introduce experiential education methods to first-year law students. Jeffrey went on to expand the clinical program at a university in Denver and developed a unique course to integrate experiential skills into research and writing work. For his contributions in developing lawyers with skills to represent vulnerable clients, and his dedication to those caught in the machination and discrimination of the legal system, Gonzaga Law School today proudly bestows the Gonzaga Law Medal upon Jeffrey Harchi. Justice Mary Fairhurst earned her degree in political science, cum laude, in 1979. She then received her law degree, magna cum laude, in 1984. In 2003, Mary Fairhurst began serving as a justice on the Washington State Supreme Court. She also received an honorary Doctor of Laws degree from Gonzaga University in 2006. We are appreciative of her presence today, and we are particularly proud to be honoring her for all she has done since she graduated. Justice Fairhurst is a true Zag, and she demonstrates her true Zag spirit by her commitment to public service every day in everything she does. And one of the most wonderful things about Justice Fairhurst, in addition to being an excellent justice, is that she is unfailingly kind and generous, making everyone she meets feel special. Please join me in welcoming Justice Fairhurst. Thank you. Congratulations. It is my honor and pleasure to be your 2015 Law School Commencement Speaker. For over 100 years, my family has been connected to and blessed by Gonzaga. Four generations of Fairhurst have graduated from this university, receiving either undergraduate and or graduate degrees. My grandfather, my father, myself, three of my sisters, one of my brothers, and a niece. And a nephew will be coming next fall to begin his undergraduate studies. Gonzaga has been and continues to have a great impact on the Fairhurst. Gonzaga taught us many things, to think critically, to serve others, and to recognize and respect every person. It would be fair to say that Gonzaga has filled our heads and filled our hearts. I am grateful for the honor of being asked to speak to you today. Now, graduates of the class of 2015, hello, hooray, congratulations, you did it. I am very excited for you 
Today is a very special day. You've been working so hard. I know you wondered if today would ever come, and it has come. It's here. You've done it. You should be very proud and pleased. I am proud and pleased for you. Just a mere 31 years ago, I was sitting in your seat, waiting to receive my Gonzaga Law degree. I remember it like it was yesterday. In my few minutes, there are many things I would like to say to you. But first, just stop and take in this moment. Think about this accomplishment. This is a really big, special deal. Throughout life, it is important to stop and just take in the moment to breathe, to smile. Life can get so hectic. There are so many things to do, so many places to be, so many demands on your time. But it's important to stop, slow down, be present. It's important to be in touch with yourself, who you are, what you love to do, what makes you happy. <clears throat> and it's important to recognize that you are special. There's no one else in the world exactly like you. There never has been and there never will be. You are unique. And you have been given your own unique gifts and talents. And you are living now in this place and in this time, not in another time or in another place. This is your time. This is your place. And I believe that you are here for some purpose that is unique to you. And your goal in life is to discover that, to discern that, to be who and what you are supposed to be. And what that is will keep evolving. There are very few straight lines. There are ups and downs, twists and turns, step for, steps forward and steps backwards. But that's life. And as long as you live, then you still have a reason or a purpose for being here. Your work, your role, your becoming, or more accurately, your being, is not done. None of us knows how many days we have, but we know we have today. What will you do with today? That is your choice, and you get to make it every day. One day you made a choice to apply to law school, and for the last three years you decided to go to law school, and today, because of those choices, here you are, ready to receive your law degree. Because of your choices, you are on the precipice of joining a noble profession. By choosing to become lawyers, you are taking on an awesome responsibility. You will help people and entities solve their legal problems by using your skills and training. Your common sense, your good judgment, and your hard work are going to enable you to find real answers to your clients' real problems. Your advice and your counsel will impact clients' lives and will impact our society. Each, <clears throat> excuse me, each day you will choose what kind of lawyer and person you're going to be and how you're going to act. And the choices you make will determine how they are describing you at your retirement party, at the end of your career, or how they're describing you in your eulogy at the end of your life. I'm reminded of a visit I had with a couple of college legislative interns who came to visit with me because they were interested about going into law. And during their visit, they were trying to get an understanding of what a lawyer was and how they would have to act if they were a lawyer. And I said to them, who are you? What describes you? Because that is what a lawyer is. A lawyer is you. And I say to you that a lawyer is you. It's really important that you be yourself. Don't be somebody else. Be your unique, wonderful self. And how you act every day you get to decide. 
I'm reminded of a story of a very dear friend of mine, a mentor to me, a woman lawyer, about 10 years my senior. She's an excellent trial lawyer. And she told me a story about how very early in her career she was taking a deposition and how she behaved, how she thought lawyers behaved. She was really rough on the opponent, sliced and diced. There wasn't much left when she was done. And even though that wasn't her natural inclination, she thought, well, maybe she could get the hang of being a lawyer. And leaving with her client, she was expecting a compliment. And instead, her client asked, was that really necessary? And she, it wasn't. She was completely deflated, and she said, no, that wasn't necessary. And she never handled another deposition in the same way. She did handle depositions by being prepared by asking the hard and important questions. But she did so respectfully, recognizing the dignity of the person she was questioning, and also the dignity of the process and the reflection on the profession. You, by your actions, will affect, and in some cases determine, how some people think about the law and about our justice system. You will determine if the public has trust and confidence in our legal system. You will determine if the justice system pe treats people fairly and respectfully. You will be the manifestation and face of the justice system. This was really brought home to me when a group of women from Turkey visited the court. And down in the courtroom, I am explaining to them a chart that shows the levels of the court. But they aren't looking at the chart. They keep looking at me. And finally, I stop and ask if they can understand me. Yes, am I going too fast? No. OK. So I keep going, and they keep looking at me. And after a tour and a visit to my chambers, as they're leaving, they ask, would you like to know why we kept looking at you? And I said, yes. We kept looking at you because we've never seen a judge smile before. And we're going to take your face back to Turkey as what the face of justice can look like. Never doubt, never doubt how powerful you are and the impact you can have. Don't underestimate what a difference all of the choices you make will have on you and on everyone else. As Mahatma Gandhi said, be the change you want to see in the world. I hear people say, it's too big a problem. I can't make any difference. And I tell you that no problem is too big and that you can make a difference, and that you do make a difference by what you do and by what you don't do. A favorite story, it's the person who heads down to the beach after a big storm to see what's washed up. And standing up on the bluff, they can see there's just one person down on the shore. And interestingly, this person is taking a step or two, leaning over, throwing something into the water, and doing it over and over again. And as they get down onto the beach, he can see that the beach is covered with thousands of starfish. And as he reaches the man already on the beach, he asks what he's doing. And he says, well, I'm throwing the starfish into the sea. And he said, why are you doing that? It can't possibly make any difference. And as the man leaned over and picked up the starfish and threw it into the sea, he said, well, it made a difference to that one. <clears throat> you will make a difference and you will get to decide the difference that you make. Ask yourself, what would you attempt to do if you knew you could not fail? What would you attempt to do if you knew you could not fail? And I encourage you to do that. Give it everything you have. You might get it, you might not. But you won't have any regrets. No couldas, wouldas, or shouldas. And when doors close, look for doors that are opening. The hard times, those are all growth periods. They're helping you be ready for the challenges that will come. Embrace them, endure them, survive them. Because if you haven't died, you have survived. And if you have survived, there is still a reason for you to be here. I know, I survived. Christmas time 2008, I'm diagnosed with stage two colon cancer. I have six months of chemo. Doctor says, if it comes back, it'll likely come back in two years. Spring 2011, it's back. It's metastasized to my lung. I now have stage four colon cancer. 
A lot of people in my family have died from cancer. I want to know my prognosis. Six months if I'm unhealthy, two years healthy, but some are still living, Mary, six or eight years later. I asked the doctor if those are numbers for people in the past. Yes. Those don't have to be my numbers. No. I said, good, because I believe in miracles. I tell my very large extended family who are quite upset and sad. I say, I understand that this is quite upsetting and sad to you, but please, don't be sad around me. I believe in miracles. And I don't know how many days I have, but I don't want to spend them being sad. I want to spend them being happy. And I want to spend them making new memories with you. Two years ago, rather than being dead, the doctor told me that there was no evidence of disease. I got my miracle. I'm still here. I'm still here. There must be a reason. You're still here. There must be a reason. Believe in miracles. Believe in yourself. Be yourself. Make good choices. Make a difference. The world needs you right here, right now. Breathe. Smile. Thank you, Justice Fairhurst. The student selected by the graduating class to speak is Destry Randalls. <laughs> Destry grew up in poverty in Missoula, Montana. He worked various jobs after high school before joining a petroleum company for a successful 20-year career. He began college to set a positive example for his three boys, graduating magna cum laude with a Bachelor of Science in Business from Lewis Clark State College. As a second-year law student, Destry provided bone marrow to his younger brother, Damon, who had been diagnosed with leukemia. Unfortunately, Damon passed away in April 2014 from the disease. Destry has served as a judicial clerk for the Honorable Benjamin Simpson in Kootenai County and worked in the prosecutor's office there. His passion is working with youth, having volunteered as a coach and leader for football and baseball. Destry plans to continue his law career in his current North Idaho community, working with juveniles and at-risk youth. Please welcome Destry Randalls. This was the only way I was getting on the court at Gonzaga. <laughs> I'd like to thank you, Dean Korn, President McCullough, Justice Fairhurst, Gonzaga School of Law faculty and staff. Thank you. All the friends and family that are here today and those that could not be here, thank you for your support. And thank you to my peers. As I stand here today, I recognize that there are many more of you deserving of this honor than me, but I will do my best. It's hard to believe that we're all here today. I came into law school with serious concerns about the next generation and discovered my fears misplaced. I met incredible people who had the qualities that I wished I had had. Bravery, compassion, joy, loyalty, kindness, faith, and intelligence. I experienced these qualities firsthand. I think it's important to remember when we arrived here at Gonzaga School of Law, we had hopes, ambitions, and goals. Many of us were scared to death, having been regaled with stories of how competitive and difficult law school can be. Now that we are together on this momentous occasion, we can look back and reflect upon this accomplishment. Hindsight informs us 
that our fears were misplaced. I have never been associated with a more compassion, compassionate, intelligent, and sincere group of people. When I was faced with my little brother's cancer and subsequent passing, it was you, my classmates, that helped me. I came close to leaving school, but you made, you made sure I did not fall behind. I had outlines, class notes, lectures, all from students who scarcely knew me. I had support from faculty and staff, and they helped me get through the most difficult period of my life. You know who you are? Thank you. One year ago, I felt more alone than I ever had in my life. Today, my heart is full. Because I am a generation older than most of you and have some life experience, I want to tell, tell you what waits for you. While this journey has been difficult, you have made it. What waits for you out there is far more difficult than anything that you have faced here. Waiting for you out there is work, jobs, bills, and life. Life waits for you out there. And life, life has a way of knocking you down. I only have a vague recollection of when it wasn't knocking me down. Your task is to get back up and help others regain their footing. The moments when you get back up, that is where we find the beauty of life. That is where the beauty of law exists. Win or lose, you have not given up. Much like our journey here, when you face the challenge and push forward, you learn a valuable lesson. Law school prepares you for these moments, and perhaps the greatest responsibility of law is that it prepares you to help others in these moments. I caution you to remain humble. Far more can be accomplished when you understand that because of your knowledge, you are merely better situated to help another. It does not elevate you above them. Know your weaknesses. Understand what you can and cannot do. Do no harm. Make sure that your actions serve the greater good, and remember that knowledge must be tempered by common sense and decency. When you find your place in the law, be careful not to sacrifice your principles. Whatever your reasons were for coming to law school, be they prosperity, service, or otherwise, do not compromise yourself. Knowing most of you, you are far too good a people to let that happen. Look to do what is right. Remember why you started down this path. Resist the temptation to merely go through the motions. Question everything. Prepare relentlessly. Do not settle and honor your commitments. We are a diverse group. We come from 23 different states and three foreign countries. I'm including Canada. We have former teachers, law enforcement officers, military personnel, retail employees, several comedians. <laughs> we are represented on virtually every end of the political spectrum. We have, we have had births, weddings, engagements, and loss. We have shared it all together, and we have embraced our differences. You have already changed the world. You've changed it for yourself, and you've changed it for every one of us that has joined you on this journey. Challenge yourself, find your calling, and be the kind of lawyer that upholds those ideals that the law is founded upon. To be a lawyer is a tremendous responsibility. It is not something that we own. We have a responsibility to serve the greater good. It is law that provides the system within, within which we coexist. It is necessary, difficult, and beautiful. We now have the opportunity to take our place amongst those who have gone before us into the practice of law. Yet we must be careful not to take away from what so many have struggled so hard to build. For when we are done, we pass it on to the next generation. Finally, do not spend your time worrying about the events of the days to come. Suffice it to know that those days will arrive and then let those events be known. And if we meet again, we should embrace and share our memories of Gonzaga School of Law. 
And if we are not to meet again, then we must ensure that this parting is well made. I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for honoring me today, and congratulations. Thank you, Destry. The members of the class of 2015 also elect a faculty member to speak to them. This year, it is Professor Vicki Williams. Thank you, Dean Korn. Well, you all clean up pretty nice. No backward baseball caps, no hoodies. I like it. First of all, I'm extremely honored and humbled by your selection of me to be the faculty speaker for your graduation. I'm not sure if it's because you want to hear my exotic Brooklyn accent one more time before you leave us, for old time's sake, or if this is payback for all the times I cold called you in civil procedure or constitutional law. But regardless of the reason why I am up here, I am very, very excited for you. And I congratulate you and your families and friends who have come from near and far to celebrate with you and with us. I know I speak for all of the Gonzaga Law School faculty and staff when I say how proud we are of you how much we appreciate the time you have spent with us, and how disappointed we are that now that we finally learned how to pronounce names like Iremescu, Kondrishin, Ketchkesh, Schlegelmilk, Lubomirova, I don't have to do it anymore. We will have to start all over again and learn a whole new crop of names in September, the law professor's equivalent of the circle of life. When each class graduates, we who remain complete a chapter in the law school's story and look forward to starting a new one. You who are moving on complete a chapter in each of your personal stories as well. I know that the law school chapters that each of you has written in your own personal stories have been rich with experiences both good and bad new friendships, discovery of previously unknown talents and pleasures, and perhaps discovery of previously unknown personal dislikes, blind spots, and areas for improvement. Glad we were able to help you out with that. After all, your stories would be very boring if they contained only smooth sailing with no headwinds on calm seas. Remember, According to Wikipedia, which you will never, ever cite for legal authority in a document, sailors call such places the doldrums, an unappealing name for an unappealing place. Sail sailors could be stuck in the doldrums for days or weeks at a time, with no wind, no waves, no progress forwards, no progress backwards. Whatever you think of your law school experience, I am relatively sure that it bore a closer resemblance to a hurricane than it did to the doldrums. But that's actually a good thing, especially if there was a little eye in the center that was calm. As lawyers, many of you will spend much of your professional life sorting through what seems to be unmanageable amounts of information piecing together the important parts, discarding the unimportant parts or unfavorable parts, and then telling your clients stories. You will tell stories in court. You will tell stories in negotiations. You will tell stories to each other in the conference room and around the water cooler. You will tell stories at home to your family and to your friends, but never reveal privileged information. Sometimes, the stories are full of pain and unfairness. 
Sometimes the stories are full of triumphs and achievements. Sometimes the stories are just plain boring and seem inconsequential and meaningless to you. The work may seem tedious, endless, worthless. Sometimes the stories you are hired to tell are so compelling or all-encompassing that they can overwhelm you. They can make you forget your own life. You might forget how to build and tell your own story, word by word, page by page, and chapter by chapter. And even when you do remember to build your own personal story, that voice in your head, the story you tell yourself about your work, your future, and your life, may sound like the voice of fear and doubt rather than the voice of encouragement, admiration, and love. Lawyers are famously risk averse. We are trained to think ahead to the worst possible outcome and to come up with ways to guard against it. This is a necessary and useful skill in a lawyer and can also be useful for planning your life. But we must guard against the negative effects that this talent can have on us and our loved ones. Too much fear and risk aversion can turn your personal story into your own personal Stephen King novel. Now, some of us may wish we were Stephen King, or at least could write like Stephen King, but how many of us wish we were actually a character in one of his novels? Hearing the voice of the deluded mother in Carrie, or the deluded fan in Misery, in our own heads as the narrator of our own personal stories. I don't see any hands, so I bet, but not very many. Many of us, including me, are prone to telling ourselves horror stories of what might happen if we take some course of action that is unusual or not entirely risk-free. And therefore, we don't take that action and miss out on great experiences or great opportunities. As reporter and Nightline anchor Dan Harris describes in his book, 10% Happier, how I tamed the voice in my head, reduced stress without losing my edge, and found self-help that actually works, a true story. Can you believe I read a book with a title like that? <laughs> it is easy to take small set setbacks or routine human failures and catastrophize them. Dan Harris describes his inner dialogue with himself as follows, quote, to be clear, I'm not talking about hearing voices. I'm talking about the internal narrator, the most intimate part of our lives. The voice comes braying in as soon as we open our eyes in the morning and then heckles us all day long with an air horn. It's a fever swamp of urges, desires, and judgments. It's fixated on the past and the future to the detriment of the here and now. It's what has us reaching into the fridge when we're not hungry, losing our temper when we know it's not really in our best interest, and pruning our inboxes when we're ostensibly engaged in conversation with other human beings. Our inner chatter isn't all bad, of course. Sometimes it's creative, generous, or funny. But if we don't pay close attention, which very few of us are taught how to do, it can be a malevolent puppeteer. Harris describes in his book how every professional setback and mistake he made in his very successful career made him think he was on the road to a flop house in Duluth. No offense to anybody from Duluth. <laughs> Let me tell you, I can relate to his fears and the road that got him there, and I suspect that many of you can too. So as you leave us and start writing your own story as a lawyer, be mindful of that inner chatter. Make sure that you are telling yourself the right story, the story about yourself, the true one, the story about your true life. Cheryl Strayed, the author of the popular memoir, Wild, also had to tame the internal narrator in order to give herself permission to have an incredible experience. As she starts her hike of over 1,000 miles on the Pacific Crest Trail, alone and inexperienced, about to succumb to fear, Strayed described her state of mind as follows. I knew that if I allowed fear to overtake me, my journey was doomed. Fear, to a great extent, 
is born of a story we tell ourselves. And so I chose to tell myself a different story from the one women are told. I decided I was safe. I decided I was strong. I was brave. Nothing could vanquish me. The story that Strayed told herself, my friends and future colleagues, is your true story. You are brave. You are strong. Look around this room and know that you are loved. You are graduating from law school. Nothing can vanquish you. Not even the bar exam. <laughs> Trust me, you are not going to end up in a figurative flop house in Duluth. You are going to do worthy things, both big and small. And here at Gonzaga, your professional home, we will read your stories with pride and fond memories and we'll welcome you back whenever you want to visit. We wish all of you the best of luck and look forward with great anticipation to watching you turn the page and write the next chapter in your wonderful and wondrous lives. Congratulations. Thank you, Professor Williams. Now you know why Destry and Professor Williams were chosen as the speakers this year, were elected by the students. We are almost at the moment you have all been anxiously awaiting, the conferral of degrees. Exams are over, the celebrations are about to begin, or for some of you, perhaps continue. We've had the privilege of watching you grow from terrified law students to appropriately confident graduating law students today. We have prepared you to be lawyers, to be excellent lawyers. Now, there will be some times when you question what you have chosen to do. Studying for the bar will probably be one of them. But there will also be days when you get mired in the details of everyday life, your bills to pay, the requirement of going to work, the demands of the practice of law. And there will be days when you are challenged by partners, by clients, or some negative media report about lawyers. And on those days, I hope you will have something to bring you back to why you chose this path, why you chose to be a lawyer, to make a change in the life of someone else, to make their life better, to look for the truth, to help someone who, before you, had no voice, to argue on behalf of someone you believe in, and sometimes to argue on behalf of someone you are not sure you believe in because it is the right thing to do, because you are a lawyer. And I hope that this will bring you back to why you chose to be a lawyer. You can make a difference. And now, by the authority vested in Gonzaga University by the state of Washington, I am pleased to present candidates for the degree in law. Associate Dean Sandra Simpson on stage right will read the names of candidates from A through L. And those graduates will be hooded by Academic Vice President Killen and Professor Jason, Professor Jason Gilmer. Associate Dean Heidi Holland on stage left will read the names of the candidates M through Z. And these candidates will be hooded by President McCullough and Professor Vicki Williams. And I'm going to go down there and shake your hands as you come down the ramp. <laughs> so, shall we begin?
Ty Jacob Albertson. Asta Margarian, cum laude. Benjamin Joel Allen. Brooks Mason. Charles Douglas Allen. Brian McCann. Nancy Allen. Cullen J. McGowan, cum laude. Nicholas Ross Anderson. Katie Merrill, magna cum laude. Ross Steven Anderson. Joseph Maservi. Brian Michael Antler. Jace Ray Mesker. Jonathan Ariano Jackson. Anthony Miller. Nathan Saunders Benjamin. Jake Miller. Desiree Nicole Bernal. Jamie Minahan, magna cum laude. Alexander Beal. Timothy John Murphy, magna cum laude. Sarah Boer, magnum cum laude. Kyle Dale Nelson, summa cum laude. Stefania Bascaroli, magnum cum laude. Madeline Nelson, cum laude. Timothy Robert Brandall. Tim Wynn. Mary Ruth Brennan. Luke O'Bannon, summa cum laude. Joseph K. Hall, magnum cum laude. Payam Parsedmer. <laughs> Hannah Grace Campbell, cum laude. Danielle Rose Perry. Samantha Louise Case. Jessica Justine Placencia, cum laude.
Stuart Castle, magnum cum laude. Brittany Quinn, cum laude. Nicole Janet Cease. Peter Gardner Ramey. Brittany Nicole Cooper, magnum cum laude. Destry William Randalls, cum laude. Andrew Cordry, cum laude. John Randolph, magna cum laude. Jamie Nicole Cordell. Tyler Adam Ruby. Billy Crawford Heim, cum laude. Jaron Charles Sandberg. TJ Darmafall. Caitlin V. Sawyer. Victoria Delane David. Timothy Schermetzler, cum laude. Brady Lloyd Davies, magnum cum laude. Jonathan Albert Schlegelmilk, magna cum laude. Andrew Paul Dickinson. Travis Schwartz. Catherine Elizabeth DeSarno. R. Troy Seeley. <laughs> Kenneth David Downey, summa cum laude. <laughs> Charles Shaw, JD, Masters of Accountancy, cum laude. Megan Driscoll, magnum cum laude. Parm Singh. James Robert Dunlap, cum laude. Brett Smith, cum laude. Elaine T. Dunn. Mohammed Ali Solomonpour, magna cum laude. Luke Eaton. Yeah. Drew Michael Spees. Chelsea Marie Elliott. Gory Sra. Catherine Joy Faber, magnum cum laude. Zachary M. Stetler. Ty Allen Farnsworth, cum laude. Peyton Elaine Stockton, magna cum laude. Alex 
Fern, cum laude. Joseph Sullivan, magna cum laude. Kathleen Marie Foy, cum laude. Stevie Swift, magna cum laude. Bowen Frazier, magnum cum laude. Chelsea Jordan Thorne, cum laude. Katie Freeman, JD MBA. Lauren Tickner Squires, cum laude. Allison Frescus, cum laude. Anna Teresa Timberlake, daughter of Dr. Diane Timberlake, trustee. Tamara Rochelle Fundrella, cum laude. Lavelle Tokic, cum laude. Samantha Govea. Peter Van Aken. Morgan Ann Griffin. Rachel Margaret Wax. <laughs> Tiffany Hansgen, cum laude. Andrew M. Wagley, summa cum laude. Danny Hamachandra. Mitchell Wayerski, summa cum laude. Keaton Jean Hilly, summa cum laude. Joshua Blake Waymond, magna cum laude. Paige Marie Holly. Lindsay Taylor Wendell. Nicole Grace Hughes. Christopher James Witt, magna cum laude. Sylvia Aramescu, cum laude. Adam Webster. Josie Marie Dashel Isaacson, magnum cum laude. Andrew D. Woods. Bijan Jalili, cum laude. Jacob B. Workman, magna cum laude. Anna Marie Katchkesh, summa cum laude. Ben Wyburnie, JD MBA. Grace King, summa cum laude. Aaron Michael Young. Yannick Kondrishin, cum laude.
Gregory Michael Zamora. Kevin Latham. Samantha Zimmerman, cum laude. Casey Lene Bowie IV. Christiana Lubomorova. Lars Lundberg, magnum cum laude. Congratulations, class of 2015. You may now move your tassel to the left. <laughs> On behalf of the university and the law school, thank you, Justice Fairhurst, for addressing our graduates. Thank you, Professors Harchi and Professor Wilson, for your incredible work for justice and the impact you've had on our law school community and on the way legal education is taught today. To the class of 2015, remember your hopes and dreams. Remember the ideals and vision you brought to law school. Remember why you chose to be a lawyer and hold on to that. Remember the good times and the challenges you had here. Go out into the world and do good work. President McCullough, AVP Killen, and honored guests, it is my honor to present to you the graduating class of 2015. Everyone, if you're standing, well, please stand for the benediction offered by Father Case. At the conclusion of the benediction, please wait for the platform party and the students, oh no, I mean graduates, to exit before you do. Then please join us for a reception on the back patio of the law school as we toast our new graduates. Can I ask that the graduates turn to face their, their friends and loved ones in the stands, please? And let's all of us extend a hand in blessing for the graduates. Loving God, these young and not so young men and women have come to the end of their course of studies at Gonzaga University School of Law and made their long dreamed of trek across the stage today 
We ask your blessing on these new JDs now and always as they pass through what can be at times a puzzling and frightening transition to the life that lies beyond law school. Guide them with your spirit, let them know the love of others, and most particularly, let them become instruments of your love and care uh, for those with whom they will live and work in this world. We pray this with loving trust in your good and holy name. Amen. <laughs>